74% of entry-level actuarial job posts explicitly state that they prefer someone that knows how to use Excel. I personally have been using advanced Excel features for over 10 years now, and I've also been able to help hundreds of future actuaries in learning how to use the tool effectively in order to get their first actuarial job and to succeed in that role. So today, I'm going to delete all that knowledge from my mind and tell you exactly how I would learn Excel from the start if I had to learn it fast in just one week. So the very first thing I would do is take a course. Now just like when you are going to learn how to drive a car, you usually go through the driver's manual and maybe take a driver's training course in order to learn everything you need to know about driving on the road and how to operate a car. So the same goes with Excel. Now you're probably thinking, duh, obviously that's what you would do first, but not all courses are the same. I would actually prefer a course where I'm doing a project alongside someone else where at the same time I'm learning all the functionality and capabilities that Microsoft Excel has because that means I get to see how these things are actually going to be used in the real world. Even better is if it's an actuarial project since that's what I'd be learning Excel for is an actuarial job. So it's kind of like knocking off two things on your resume, Excel and actuarial knowledge. Now, if you want to know all the different functionalities and capabilities and formulas that you need to know in Excel as a future actuary, then you want to check out the blog post that I've linked right down below. I created it. It's going to go so much more in depth about all this stuff than I'm going to in this video. I highly recommend checking that out when you can. Now, there are lots of great Excel courses. There are even tons here on YouTube that you can get for free. However, if you would like to learn Excel in an actuarial context with projects, then you've got to check out the Actuary Accelerator community where we go through a whole course on Excel, helping you go from beginner to advanced and learning these skills in terms of a project that you could actually do in real actuarial work. I will link to the AAC, Actuary Accelerator community, right down below in the description. Okay, so when you're learning to drive a car, you go through the course in the manual, but you usually don't go right out to the road after that. Instead, you go to an empty parking lot and start practicing. Get a feel for the gas, get a feel for the brake, how fast can you accelerate, how fast can you stop, all that sort of stuff. In terms of Excel, the empty parking lot is equivalent to practice projects. In working with hundreds of future actuaries on Excel, I've learned that one of the most difficult things to do is to take everything from the course and be able to actually apply it on your own. And you need to practice that before you get to the job. You don't want to go into your first actuarial job and your boss slaps a, a simple Excel project on your plate, I guess you could say, and you have to sit there and stare at it for a couple hours before you can even do anything. That's not gonna look good on you because they're going to expect you to know how to use Excel. So practice this before you get the job. Not only will these practice projects be great things to put on your resume, they could also be talking points during your interview. And I've had many of my clients tell me that the Excel projects they did while they were preparing to get an entry level actuarial job were some of the most important things that employers cared about. So don't neglect this step. Now, the ideal situation would be to do Excel projects that were actuarial based. So an example of that is to create an annuity calculator that would tell your clients exactly when they can expect annuity payments based on the plan that they've selected. So this is actually our project number one in the Actuary Accelerator community, but it's something that you could try on your own, or if you want all the instructions on how to do that project then, the AAC is the place to be. Link down below in the description. Another thing about doing practice projects is that you're also going to be able to really start to recognize which keyboard shortcuts would be helpful for you. In Excel, there's a lot of different things that you're doing over and over again, and you can use your mouse or your cursor to do that, but it's a lot more efficient and faster if you can use keyboard shortcuts. So I'd start to recognize what I'm doing over and over again, and then look up on Google or ChatGBT how to do that with the keyboard shortcut keys, and that would really speed me up. I could do a whole video about that sort of stuff, like shortcuts that I use a lot in Excel. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll create a video about that in the future. By the way, if you've liked this video so far, could you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like more actuarial content. Okay, so you're done driving around in the parking lot. It is time to take your driving skills to the road. 
In Excel, the road is actually using your Excel skills in a real workplace. That means real life situations. And if I was going to learn Excel again, this is the next step I would take is to use my Excel skills in my stepping stone position or my current job. Imagine being able to tell a recruiter that you are able to make a substantial difference in a business using your Excel skills, whether that's save time, save money, increased profits or sales. These are things that are instantly going to give you more credibility and lots to talk about on your resume and during interviews. Plus, this allows you to get a sense of what it's like to use Excel in the real world where data is imperfect and things come up that you weren't expecting and maybe even using formulas and spreadsheets that other people have created. It just opens up new opportunities that you often can't get through projects. So if I had to create a project for myself, I'd go to my current bookkeeping position which I work at part-time right now and I'd create an Excel document that was able to export everything that I needed in order to import it into my bookkeeping software and by the way this is something I actually already have done and it is an exercise in Excel formulas I will tell you that this project was able to cut down the amount of hours that I needed to spend from my quarterly and tax submissions it cut it down from about 10 hours to two hours so since that's four four times per year, it's saving me about 32 hours of my personal time every single year. Okay, so doing all this stuff in Excel and really amping up your qualifications isn't really going to help you much if you don't properly display those skills on your resume. In our Actuary Accelerator community, I do boost your future sessions on a monthly basis and this is a time when members of the program can come and get their resume critiqued by me. Well. I always see that future actuaries put a skills section or something similar on their resume that says they know how to use Excel. You might be wondering what's wrong with that. The thing is that employers see that on almost every future actuary's resume. They always say they know how to use Excel. But without any proof to back it up, it really doesn't mean anything because employers see it all the time. So because of that, I would actually put a technical project section right on my resume so that I could highlight some of the biggest projects I've done in terms of my technical skills. So in this section, I'd create a subheading that had the name of the project that I did and the tool that I used. In this case, it would be Excel. And I'd also include a bullet point about what that project was all about and the results that I got from it, plus a bullet point outlining the most complex formulas, functionalities, capabilities that I used in Excel in order to complete that project. And that's really going to further demonstrate your knowledge of Excel rather than just kind of generally saying you know how to use Excel. It'll make you stand out. I've given you a lot of info here, so to get some clarity around where to actually start, I wanted to break down what your next step should be. And that next step should be to figure out where you're actually going to learn Excel. Are you someone that wants to learn Excel in an actuarial context and do actuarial projects? If so, then the Actuary Accelerator community may be the perfect place for you to go. That's where you can get in-depth Excel trainings from beginner to advanced in an actuarial context and tons of projects. If you're someone that has a budget that doesn't allow for that right now, you're probably going to use YouTube. So where on YouTube are you going to go? Which course will you use? That's important to figure out and really the first step. It doesn't matter where you learn Excel, but I do highly recommend that you start learning Excel while you're studying for your actuarial exam. It doesn't have to be learning it in one week. That's a little bit unrealistic for most people. It is possible, but maybe unrealistic, especially when you're studying for an actuarial exam. So don't worry about that. Just be working towards Excel at the same time. So you're turning yourself into a well-rounded top candidate rather than an exam junkie.